What's going on everybody, Estas here, and in today's video we're going to be doing an M1 Finance Portfolio update. This is actually the third episode to the M1 Finance Portfolio series, and for those of you guys that don't know what I'm doing, well, I'm building a portfolio from absolute scratch, showing you guys all my trades, all of my activity, all the buys, all of the sells, and the reasoning behind it so you can understand how I personally build portfolios from scratch and how I maintain them and rebalance them, you know, just from my personal perspective. So if you're new to the channel and you want to keep along with this particular series and with other content that I produce, feel free to go down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, so here we are in my M1 Finance portfolio and the total value of the invested money right now is $208.06. And if you look up here, I have $85 sitting in cash waiting for opportunities to buy more stock and that's bringing my total account value right now to about 290 to about 295 dollars and since the inception of this portfolio you guys can see July 2nd is the first day that I started buying stocks in this portfolio the total gain is three dollars and 36 cents and the portfolio is up 2.16 percent and hypothetically if I got this return every single month which is very unrealistic because the stock market is unpredictable but let's say I got this return every month over a 12 month span that's a 24% return but again that's hypothetical that is not going to happen because one month the market can be up 5% the next month it could be down 2% and it's really like a roller coaster right but I figured I'd just say that a quick little hypothetical scenario and since the second episode of this series there's actually been some activity in this portfolio that I want to share with you all but before we do get to that let's take a look at my holdings very quickly for all of you that don't know what I'm currently holding in this portfolio so we can see 3m is my number one position right now at a cost basis at $50 that's how much I have in 3m and by the way you can actually have partial shares with m1 finance you can see here the only company that I own a full share of is 18 at 1.03 shares but after 3m I actually bought Johnson & Johnson this past week in the past two weeks I believe and we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes we have Altria here ticker symbol MO at 0.72 shares AT&T again at 1.03 shares and Alibaba and VEA the Vanguard FTSC developed markets fund those are my bottom two positions right now and if we go back to the portfolio actually so we can see this pie you guys can see um, the the pie that I personally have here the, that I personally created you can see the target goals here are 20% for 3M 20% for Altria 20% for AT&T 15 Alibaba 15 Johnson & Johnson and 10% to FTSC developed markets and to be completely honest with you all I kind of want to alter this a bit bring Altria a bit down a little bit less less in the portfolio, maybe 10%. And I kind of want to bring Johnson & Johnson up a bit, maybe 20%, and then maybe bump up AT&T a little bit more as well, or 3M, because I do actually think 3M is still at a pretty good value point right now. But if we go back, you can see, you know, the order here and the targets and what the uh, percentage in the portfolio actually is for each uh, individual holding here. So you can see the actual uh, stake of MMM right now is 24.6%. Johnson & Johnson's 21%. Um, Altria 17%. AT&T 17%. And BABA and VEA are around 10%. And honestly, I want both of these roughly at about 10%. So over the past couple of weeks since I've started this portfolio, I've slowly been starting to, you know, structure it and build it to a percentage percentage value that I kind of want for each of these, you know, stocks. And for those of you guys that don't know, it takes a long time to build a portfolio. It doesn't just happen overnight. It doesn't even happen in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You know, it takes years because if you're looking at particular stocks and they're overvalued, you're not just going to buy them because you want them in your portfolio. You're going to wait until they dip and then you'll start adding into them. You'll shave off some percentage off of other stocks 
and then you'll add into the new position. And that's kind of what I've been doing, right? In the past couple of weeks, we saw Johnson & Johnson take a big dip, and I've been wanting to add money into Johnson & Johnson. And, and let's just get into that portion of the video. Let's talk about Johnson & Johnson. And if we go to my activity, you guys can see here, I believe this is the first day that I bought Johnson & Johnson, or no, this is when I bought a bit more AT&T, uh, $15 of AT&T. That's one of the moves that I made. But I started buying Johnson & Johnson on the 16th, I believe. I put $20 in. Yep, $20 Johnson & Johnson on July 16th. And then if we go to the next day here, uh, or rather the next trade on the 24th of July, I bought $25 more of Johnson & Johnson. And you can see the $25 purchase was at around $129. I bought about 0.19 shares of J&J. &J. And the previous purchase was at about $20 again, and I bought around, let's see what price, I think it was in the 130s if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you can see here is at about $133.03. I bought 0.15 uh, shares of Johnson & Johnson. And again, guys, I'm buying these stocks when I think they're approaching a pretty good value. And right now, Johnson & Johnson is facing a lot of litigation, and if we just go to their stock here, and go to the Think or Swim um, you know, platform, and look at their stock you can see ever since you know the middle of July they went from 141 down to about $128 and when the stock dipped and for those of you guys that don't know when a stock dips their dividend yield goes up so their dividend yield was at around a 3% starting out and I find that very very attractive because in my opinion Johnson & Johnson is one of the safest dividend paying companies out there right their their payout ratio right now is about um, you know, 45%, 40%. They've been growing their dividend for so many years. It's ridiculous. You know, my personal stake in this company is really to be a long-term cash cow position where the dividend is being reinvested, compounded, and honestly, I want to one day live off the cash flow, right? That's the ideology behind this particular investment. And I view this as a company that's going to be around for many, many years. And the first Further it dips down, guys, I have that $85 in cash. As you guys saw, I'm going to be buying more and more of Johnson & Johnson. So if we're going back to Safari, and very quickly, let me just spill out some news for those of you guys that don't even know why Johnson & Johnson fell, because obviously it's due to a negative catalyst. And I have some uh, um, notes here. Johnson & Johnson, again, it's currently under litigation, criminal investigation for allegedly concealing cancer risks of of baby powder. Investigation is being done to determine whether or not Johnson & Johnson lied to the public about the baby powder's cancer risks. There are several civil lawsuits against Johnson & Johnson from customers claiming their talcum baby powder caused their ovarian cancer. Johnson & Johnson has been sued more than 13,000 times for failing to inform customers that its talcum powder contained asbestos, which causes a form of cancer called mesothelioma. So right now, that is the negative news surrounding Johnson & Johnson, and that ended up tanking the stock. And do you guys remember a couple of months ago, the same similar news about asbestos came out, the stock dropped, and ultimately it recovered, right? So that's kind of how I'm viewing this. You know, the stock dropped, it opened up that short-term buying opportunity as the media has, you know, negative lights on Johnson & Johnson. And I believe, you know, obviously the litigation, it's still going to affect the company, no doubt about it, but I believe in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, Johnson & Johnson, it's going to slowly recover as the media, you know, puts attention elsewhere, you know, as people start, you know, just kind of forgetting about the, uh, the news, but again, the litigation, it's still going to be there, which can come back and affect Johnson & Johnson stock in the next couple of months, right? It can very well drop the stock 5-10% again, and if it does, I'll be viewing that as a another buying opportunity, right? That's kind of how 
this goes, guys. You have to be patient with your cash. When when opportunities come about, you start buying in, and that's what I ended up doing. So at this point, guys, my main focus with this portfolio is to focus on the value that I personally see out there in the markets, and the value that I see right now is in pretty much the stocks that I own here, especially in my top four. I see a lot of value in 3M, a lot of value in Johnson & Johnson right now, and a lot of value in MO and AT&T. And these are holdings that I plan on holding for a long time. So compound interest can kick in and the dividend can really just continue to grow and beat inflation and just really skyrocket my returns over the next couple of decades and years, guys. And I'm sure a lot of you all are thinking like, why don't you have any growth stocks? Why don't you have any tech companies in your portfolio, like, like pure tech companies? And honestly, guys, a lot of the stocks that are in the tech sector that I really like, they're pretty overvalued right now, in my opinion. I'm not going to be going out there and just buying these tech stocks just to have them in my portfolio. I kind of want to get them at a discount, right? I kind of want to get them at a 10, 15, 20% dip, right? If we get another, you know, December of 2018, where the markets were down 20% from their peaks, you know, if we get that again, I will be buying more tech stocks, guys. Trust me, and you'll see it in these portfolio updates. But until then, you know, until the markets take a dip, right now the S&P's at 3027, guys, that's an all-time high. You know, until these markets take a sizable dip, until these tech stocks, you know, you know, like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, until some of these come down 5, 10, 15 percent, I'm going to be focusing on ones that are down 20, 25 percent. And although their businesses might not be growing as fast, they have a strong and steady dividend and those companies are the ones that I have here in my top four, right? 3M, J&J, Altria, and AT&T. And obviously, Baba is growth too. That's a huge growth stock and that's about 10%. So you can't really say I, I have zero exposure to growth right now. I do 10% in BABA and VEA has some growth in there as well uh, in some of the stocks it, it invests in. But that's pretty much it, guys, for this portfolio update uh, for the third episode. Let me know down below in the comment section what you thought about this M1 Finance update. And if you guys want to join M1 Finance, it's a discount broker. You don't pay each time you buy, each time you sell. You can have fractional shares, so you can own Amazon, Google if you only have a hundred dollars to invest and you can rebalance your portfolio and pretty much have this pie the way you set it you know invest automatically for you if you want it to i personally have auto invest off but if you want to auto invest all your cash m1 would automatically invest my entire cash balance you can do that if you want to but me personally i want to be more hands-on but for the people out there that want to be more passive that is what you can do and if you want to sign up for m1 finance guys the link is down below and you do get 20 bucks for signing up and once you fund the account so i hope you all enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe join the discord group chat and the facebook group and follow me on twitter and instagram i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching it means a lot to me peace out